Bonga Hub. FIC St. Louis is represented by Metal Francis. And Committed to Joshua. Okay. Oh, please put your hands together for them. St. Joseph is represented by West Alfield Ellen. Kumi Benedict Mav. And St. Mary Preparatory School is represented by Damwaji Manjem Fimati and Benedict Opombwachi. So you're all welcome. It's good to see you all today. St. Mary, welcome back. So good luck to all the schools. So we are starting off with round one, the science spectrum. So this round is in two parts. The first part, you'd have questions from agricultural science, chemistry, biology, and then physics. So each major question is worth three points. You have two attempts for a major question. There are some questions that would, you'd have just one attempt, for, even for a major question. So when it gets to those questions, I will let you know. For a bonus, you have only one attempt. So if you're ready to answer a bonus, you let me know by ringing the bell, pressing the bell. You hold on to the bell and I call you. Today, if I do not call you and you give the answer, I will deduct marks. So you hold on to the bell and then I call you. If you get the bonus question wrong, half the point goes to the other school. You need to understand this point. So if a question goes to FIC St. Louis and they can't answer the question, and now I throw the bonus to either St. Joseph or St. Mary, and St. Mary attempts, and they get it wrong, then half a point goes to St. Joseph. That's how it works. So no guessing for the bonus. So you have 30 seconds for a question that involves calculation. And then 15 seconds for questions that do not involve calculation. So that will bring us to the end of the first part. The second part, you'd have five minutes to take part in a practical session. After that, you answer questions. When you are done, I would need you to bring the papers to me. So one person from each of the schools will take the sheet and bring it to me. Is that OK? So we are starting. Yes. So if I see St. Louis, I'm starting with you. So the agricultural set. Distinguish between monoculture and monocropping. Monocropping is the farming system whereby one crop is grown on a particular piece of land. A monoculture is a cultural practice whereby a piece of um, one particular crop is grown over a piece of land over a, for a specific number of periods. No. Okay, I will not give it to you if I see. So, St. Mary, monoculture is the type of farming system where a farmer grows one type of crop and repeats it the next farming season. And monocropping refers to the type of farming system where a farmer grows one type of crops and changes it um, the next farming season. Okay, that is correct. St. Joseph, distinguish between intensive farming and extensive farming. Uh, intensive farming is a farming system whereby the farmer grows crops on a small piece of land, whilst the, external, the, whilst the extensive farming is a type of farming system where the farmer grows crops and raise animals on a large piece of land. Okay, that is correct. Now, St. Mary. 
distinguish between organic farming and pastoral farming? Pastoral farming is a farming system whereby the farmer raises livestock on a piece of land, they moves them from one place to another in search of food and water. While organic farming or ecological farming is a farming system whereby the farmer grows crops or raises livestock using environmentally safe techniques that are free from most synthetic chemicals. That is correct. So that brings us to the end of the agricultural set of questions. Now we move on to the biology set of questions. FIC St. Louis. So now I would need you to explain this phrase. Osmosis can also be said to be the diffusion of water. Explain. This is because um, osmosis happens in only um, liquids, but diffusion happens in both liquids and, and gases. And because osmosis happens in both uh, liquids, it's, that's what the phrase is giving us. Osmosis is the diffusion of water. No. No. Yes, St. Joseph. It's because os in osmosis, the molecules of the water. They move from a higher point of concentration of the of the solvent. That is correct. So now St. Joseph, your major question. Explain the term a semi-permeable membrane. It, uh, it is uh, it is a living tissue. That allows only water to pass through it easily and does not allow other substances to pass through it easily. I'll give you two out of three. Because for the semi permeable membrane, it's not just water. So it allows mo molecules of a particular type or size. So not just water. But then, whilst it allows for a particular type or size, then it, it doesn't allow for other types or sizes to pass through. So not just water. So I'll give you two out of three. St. Mary Preparatory School. Explain the term concentration gradient. Concentration gradient refers to the difference of concentration in molecules between two substances. Okay, that is correct. <laughs> so that brings us to the end of the biology set of questions. Now to chemistry. So I'll need each school to provide the systemic names of the following chemical compounds. FIC St. Louis. CU, into brackets, NO3, bracket closed, 2. Copper nitride. Come again. The systemic names. Copper nitroxide. No. A bonus, St. Joseph. Copper trioxonitrate, four. I'll give you half. So no. So it's copper 2 trioxonitrate 4. St. Joseph. Fe2 into brackets CO3 bracket closed 3. That is correct. <laughs> St. Mary, CA3 into brackets PO4, bracket close 2. Calcium tetra ozo phosphate, 
Bay. That is correct. That brings us to the end of the chemistry set. Now to the physics set of questions. FIC saying we. What is the meaning of the statement, water wets glass? And what causes water to wet glass? Water wets glass because the force of, the, the cohesive force between the molecules of water and the, and, the, and the molecules of glass is higher than the adhesive force. You have another attempt. Water wet glass because the adhesive force between the molecules of water and the glass is higher than the cohesive force between the water and the glass. Say what you just said again. I did not hear it because of the bills. I said water wet glass because the, uh, the adhesive force between the molecules of water and the glass is higher than the cohesive force between the molecules of water and the glass. That is correct. St. Joseph, some amount of mercury is poured into a glass test tube. How does the meniscus or the surface of mercury appear in the glass tube after it is filled? And what causes it to appear so? The curved surface of the mercury tends convex because the cohesive force is greater than the adhesive force. Another attempt. I need you to a cohesive force between what? Between the molecules of the mercury. In this practical, we are, looking at, we are looking at determining the density of a regular solid. So every competing school has a piece of string. A beaker containing, okay, so you have a measuring cylinder. an electronic balance in front of you and then a piece of ignos rock. So each school would need to determine the density of the ignos rock to one decimal place. Then you state two precautions you took in this activity and state three applications of the knowledge of density of substances. Does every school have everything? Are you ready? Start work.
So time up. Please bring it. Time up, Good Shepherd. In Mary's. <laughs> Please stop work. So I'll take one mark from St. Joseph and then one from St. Mary. So you all had different masses. You were to get the uh, mass on the electronic balance. So when you do that, you get two points. If you get that correctly, you get two points. For the volume, I need for the um, densities, I need to see how you get the volumes. So I need to see you have an initial volume and a final volume, and then the proper subtraction done. You get one mark for that. Then in calculating the densities, 
it's one mark. If you do not write a correct unit, you get half the mark. For the application, if you get that correctly, you get two marks. Then the precautions. It's two points for each precaution. So that's four points for the precautions. So, the, uh, so at the end of the hot lab session, St. Mary's School had five points. But I'm taking out one. So you get four. St. Joseph had four and a half points. I'm taking out one, so you get three and a half. FIC St. Louis had six and a half points. So at the end of round one, FIC St. Louis had 9.5 points. St. Mary Preparatory School had 15.5 points. And St. Joseph had 17 points. So now to round two. The math wheel. Add a substitution. So there's a substitution for FIC St. Louis. So Joshua is being replaced by Percy. And there's a correction for the systemic names. It was copper 2 trioxonitrate 5, not 4, 5. So now it's round 2. The math wheel. So the rules. You have questions from various aspects of mathematics. Each major question is worth three points. A bonus is worth two points. If you get the bonus wrong, the half the mark goes to the other school. For questions that involve calculation, you have 30 seconds. For ones that do not involve calculation, you have 15 seconds. At the end of the first half, we would have the plain geometry exercise. You'd answer the question for three minutes. So ready. St. Joseph, I'm starting with you. Solve 1.6 times 0 0.7, all divided by 0 0.0028, leaving your answer in standard form. So 1.6 times 0 0.7, all divided by 0 0.0028. Leave your answer in standard form. Bonus to St. Mary. Six times ten thousand. No. No, that's it. So it's four times ten to the power two. St. Mary preparatory school. Your major question. Solve zero point zero zero three times zero point four eight or divided by 0 0.024, leaving your answer in standard form. Six times 10 power 
indicative to that is correct FIC St. Louis. Solve 0 0.0012 times 5 divided by 0 0.3. You're leaving your answer in standard form. Two point zero times ten raised to the power negative two. Okay, so it was time. So no. No, say Mary say Mary rang it first. Two two point zero times ten power negative. That is correct. That brings us to the end of numbers and numerals. Now to financial mathematics. St. Joseph. The interest rate calculated on deposits made at a savings and loan company is 3% per annum. How long will it take Nanekia to receive an interest of 120 Ghana CDs on her 800 Ghana CDs that she deposited at the company? Twenty-four Ghana CDs. We're looking at how long it will take her to invest. Twenty-four years. No. So that's it. A bonus. Yes, in Mary. Five years. That is correct. <laughs> Saint Mary, your question. Uncle Ebo received an interest of seven hundred and twenty Ghana CDs after saving an amount of money with a bank for four years. How much did he deposit at the bank if the interest rate is 9% per annum? 9% per annum. That is correct. <laughs> now to FIC Singh After depositing an amount of 1,200 Ghana CDs at a bank, Mr. Ofori received an interest of 360 Ghana CDs after a period of three years. At what rate per annum was the interest calculated? Ten years. At what rate per annum was the interest? Ten percent. That is correct. So that brings us to the end of financial mathematics. St. Joseph, a triangular plywood of base length 19 centimeters and vertical height 10 centimeters has a hole of area 56 centimeters squared 
drilled through it. What is the area of the plywood left? Nineteen centimeters squared. No. Seventy-five centimeters squared. No. F I C Saint Louis. Thirty-nine centimeters squared. That is correct. Saint <laughs> Mary Preparatory School. A square placard of side 14 centimeters has a hole of area 89 centimeters squared drilled through it. What is the area of the placard left? That is correct. <laughs> FIC St. Louis. A rectangular metal plate of size 15 centimeters by 6 centimeters has a hole of area 36 centimeters squared drilled through it. What is the area of the plate? Ninety centimeters. No. So what is left? Fifty-four centimeters square. That is correct. <laughs> that brings us to the end of mentoration. Now to probability. Saint Joseph. A letter is chosen at random from the word economics. What is the probability that it will be a letter other than C? Hey, seven over nine. That is correct. St. Mary Preparatory School. A letter is chosen at random from the word mathematics. Mathematics. What is the probability that it will be a vowel? Four on eleven. That is correct. FIC St. Louis. A letter is chosen at random from the word signs. What is the probability that it will be a letter? It will be a letter A. Zero. That is correct. So that brings us to the end of probability and to the end of the first half. Now to the plane geometry exercise.
St. Louis FIC had six points. St. Joseph had eight points. St. Mary Preparatory School had 10 points. So at the end of round two, St. Joseph had 11 points. FIC St. Louis had 17.5 points. And St. Mary Preparatory School had 26 points. <laughs> now to round three, the adrenaline round. So in this round, we have the true or false part and the riddles part. So questions in this round go to all the schools. So you get my attention by pressing onto the bell and holding onto it till I call you to give the answer. Do not blurt out an answer. So a correct answer goes for two points for the true or false part. If you get it wrong, half a point goes to the other two contending schools. Now to the riddles. For the riddles, you answer a question correctly on the first clue, you get five points. On the second clue, four points. On the third and any other clue, you get three points. So an incorrect answer to the riddle takes you out of that riddle. Are we ready? Every school kindly test your bell. FIC St. Louis, St. Joseph, St. Mary P. Bridgery School. Okay, we start. To the true or false, first question. Beans, groundnuts, Okra and cowpea are all cover crops. FIC St. Louis, false, that is incorrect. <laughs> Second question. The change of taste of water during boiling is as a result of lost air. FIC St. Louis, true, that is correct. Third question. When left from the same height, a body of weight 50 Newton will hit the ground first before that of weight 20 Newton. FIC St. Louis, true. That is incorrect. So if they're at a height, they'll fall to the ground at the same time because they fall according to acceleration due to gravity. So it does not depend on their weight. So fourth question. Arteries contain valves in them to prevent backflow of blood to the various organs. FIC St. Louis, true. That is incorrect. So it's false. Because first of all, arteries, most arteries do not even contain valves. We have just two arteries that have valves, the pulmonary and the aortic arteries. And they prevent backflow from blood to the heart, not to the other organs. 
So the last and final question for the true or false. A list of consecutive numbers, numbers must, a list of consecutive numbers have their mean and median being equal. FIC St. Louis. False. That is incorrect. <laughs> so that brings us to the end of the true or false. Now to the riddles. First clue, first riddle, first clue. I am a dimensionless number associated with atoms of an element. Second clue. I can be positively or negatively charged and non-existent for elements in their pure states. Third clue. I am either real or hypothetical and carried by an element in its pure state or compound. Last clue, though I now apply to all elements beside oxygen, my name still, still suggests I am only about oxygen. St. Mary. Oxidation number. That is correct. <laughs> Second riddle. First clue. I am a structure found in both plants, leaves, and animals. Second clue, I am into the transport business. Third Cytoplasm. No. Third clue, in plants, I run both parallel or in a network inside the organ I live in. St. Mary. That is correct. Now to the third riddle. First clue. I am an electronic component. Second clue. I can generate electrical signals or switch them. Third clue. I consist of a doped semiconductor material, St. Mary. Transistor. That is correct. Please hold on to the bell. If not, another school would have the chance to ring the bell. Fourth riddle. First clue. I am a parasitic living organism. Second clue, I am autotrophic and hence I am considered a partial parasite. Third clue, I depend on my host for water and nutrients using my roots which grow on its branches. Last clue, think of the five digits of your leg and figure out the last part of my name, St. Joseph. Miss Tutu. That is correct. Now to the final riddle. First clue. I am a plain figure with straight edges. Second clue. Each of my sides intersects exactly two other sides, but only at their end points. Third clue. My sides are non-collinear and have a common end point. Last clue. I am named after the number of sides I have. St. Joseph. Pyramid. No. St. Mary. Giant. No. Last clue. I am named after the number of sites I have. Who am I? Quadratra. No. So it's a polygon. 
So that brings us to the end of round three. At the end of the adrenaline round, FIC St. Louis had two points. St. Joseph had five points. And St. Mary Preparatory School had 11 points. So at the end of the first semi-final contest. FIC St. Louis had 29 points. St. Joseph had 33 points. And St. Mary's Preparatory School had 52.5 points. Congratulations, St. Mary Preparatory School. See you in the finals. The other contestants from St. Mary's Thank you.